Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Junior. And I'm Irresponsible. And we're the, the Nerdy, Nerdy Bros. Bros. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, guys. I hope you really enjoyed that first episode. Please don't ask me why I'm irresponsible. I'm ashamed and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, really happy that the first episode came out. It did come out later than it was supposed to. Uh, techni- te- technical difficulties. When did it finally? It was like Friday, Friday at Friday. 1 in the morning, finally. But yeah, the, but the actual episode was out. Yeah, the, still on Thursday. Yes, yes, the so actual podcast was out on Thursday, but the video format came out on Friday at like one in the morning. But that's not gonna happen. Yeah, we haven't failed you guys yet. Now, yeah, now we we just gotta be better about our timing. Yeah, I mean, there, there was just like everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Like it was editing long form. I've, I've never edited a video that long before. Like most of my YouTube videos have been like maybe fifteen minutes tops. So it was editing and then just exporting it and yeah, just like, oh, it failed. And yeah, it was just a bunch of dumb shit that happened. Well, yeah. And you had to, you told me you had to delete the program that you use and then yeah. re-download it, right? Yeah. It was like storage full. And then I, I, yeah, it was just really, really, really stupid shit that happened. So was, like I said, everything that could go wrong did go wrong, but hopefully I fixed all that. So this week should just go way smoother. But it's out there, and we really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hope you guys came back for round two of the video podcast. And as always, it's still going to be on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. But here in the, I don't do, do we just call this like the Nerdy Bros Studio, or do we call this like our workshop? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Here well, at the Nerdy Bros Studio, sure. I don't know. Uh, whatever, whatever it is, we'll we'll think of that later on a later date. Uh, we'll get the ball rolling with uh, the first part of our show that we always like to call. Junior's hot take, and this is the part of the show where I ask Junior about something new and upcoming, and get his hot take, his uh, his opinion, get get to see what the mind juices in his head are flowing, and 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 see see what it's all about up in there. And I'm gonna ask you about a game that I feel like I've seen a trailer for like three years ago, or maybe even four years ago, and it is now finally coming out this year. And that game is Bio Mutant Junior. Yes. What about it? What's what's your hot take on it? <laughs> I was like, I thought, don't you freeze like, on me now, you, man. Well, usually, you're like, so are you like excited about it or something? You just why? Well, what else would I ask? Yeah. Um. Well, yes, I'm excited about it. I didn't know anything about this game, um, until last year, I believe, and then I kind of started uh, to look into it, and I I also watched the trailer, um, and it looked really cool, um. I mean, it kind of, to me, it kind of looked like a little monster hunter, but like you're playing as one of the the felines, which if you're not familiar with monster hunter, um, you play as like a human character, but then you can have like a little sidekick that's like a cat, which will like give you buffs and also like help you fight these like huge monsters that you're trying to kill so you can turn their hides into weapons or armor or whatever. But anyway, uh, the game looked like maybe you were playing as a... Uh, one of the felines from that game. Um, but yeah, I don't know the the graphics just look like really, really cool. Look like you were on like, like huge open world alien planet type stuff. So, so um, I, it, I, I took it more as like, uh, what's it called when they make animals walk on two legs? They, they're anthropomorphic. Yeah. Anthropomorphic. It seemed more like, and I guess that like kind of tied in with the title of being bio mutant where I still feel like it's like earth but maybe like po- post-apocalyptic, maybe the humans are gone yeah. and now all of the animals are anthropomorphic. And yeah, I, and I don't know, like in the, in the trailer, yeah, you see is like the, the cat is like the, the MC of the trailer. So we'll see. I mean, who knows? Maybe there'll be, you could play as different types of animals or maybe you will have to play as a cat. Either way, yeah, it does definitely look pretty cool. I, uh, I recommend anyone to check out that, that old ass trailer at this point. But yeah. It's coming out this year. Yeah, I think it's, it's not coming out next month, right? It's not coming out in April. I almost was going to say that, but just because I didn't immediately check my sources before this, I should have, but I didn't. Uh, it I might be April, it. but it like, it could be April. Yeah. But like, I remember like asking like one of the employees at GameStop once, I was like, Oh, when is this game coming out? Cause like, it looks really cool. And then they were like, yeah, I think that was slotted to come out this year. But like, and then they checked and they're like, yeah, right now it has like a, a 1229, or whatever, a 1231 
of the end of the year, which usually means they don't have an actual date yet for it. Um, yeah, it just means you just got to wait. So, yeah, but I am patient. excited for it. All right. All right. Cool. 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 Moving the show right along, ladies and gents, we get to a fan favorite segment known as anime is an important part of our culture. All right. Yeah. That's what I normally do. Like <laughs> when it was just a podcast format and then the thing plays. Um, so anyways, uh, junior, you've been, you've been watching some, some anime, haven't you? Uh, yes, I have. I've been watching quite a bit of anime actually. Um, what have you, what do you, what, what did you see? I finished, um, well, you've recommended this anime to me a few times, like, like years ago, um, death parade. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I finally watched it. Uh, even though it's only a 12 episode anime, I did watch it over like three or four days. Um, like I sat down and watched like a big, like maybe like the first four or five episodes, but it was like really late at night. So I went to bed and then, you know, just life got to do other stuff, cleaning shit like that watching the kid. Um, but I finished it and it was good. I, I enjoyed it. I liked the premise. Um, for those of you who don't know, the whole premise of the show is that the, when you die, you go to this, um, you go to this like afterlife place. I would say it's more like a limbo. Yeah. It's cause it's, well, they I mean, call it the afterlife a oh, few times. Okay, yeah. Okay. And then your soul gets judged by this uh, character named the Arbiter. And these Arbiters have, like, no human emotions and, like, no, like, they're not, like, they have, like, no human attachments or anything. They've never been alive. They're kind of, like, angel-type figures, kind of. Um, but they're supposed to, of the two souls that come, they're supposed to send one to... It's not really heaven or hell. It's like if you if you're the good soul, you get to go be reincarnated. And if you're the bad soul, then you go to this place that they call the void, which is like this huge dark ab abyss that you basically just live in your mind and relive all your shitty memories for the rest of all of eternity or yeah. whatever. And I thought it was kind of cool because it's set up to the point where like the souls don't immediately know that they've died yes. and it kind of looks like they're like in a hotel. All their, all their memories get wiped. Yeah. They look like they're in a hotel. And then at the end, like they get into an elevator that either goes up or down. Yeah. So, but um, yeah. yeah, so it's that's basically cool. the premise. Um, but yeah, it's like at first I thought it was going to be like really gory. Cause you, I kind of got like saw vibes from it, but then like there's like heartfelt moments and then there's just like really sad moments. But so like, yeah, I would recommend it. Like it's like I said, it's only twelve episodes. Really, really good short anime. Like I said, I love short animes, so I would totally recommend this one. Uh, the one that I actually just started today and finished today, another twelve episode anime called um, "It's Cabinari of the Iron yeah, Fortress." Cabinari of the Iron Fortress, which was very good. And like I was telling you upstairs, Tito. Um, huge huge attack on titan vibes yeah, from this anime i'm definitely gonna have to sit down and watch it but like uh there's a bunch of stuff just on my list uh I, like our, our buddy james reached out and asked us if we had uh well i know you started s cryad and then he asked if like i've started watching it yet and it's just like i don't want to start it because i'm still in the middle of trying to finish other ones and then you know week by week basis i'm keeping up with other animes you know watching like an episode a day of uh of the different stuff that comes out so i it is on my list i am gonna watch it that's probably the next one but first i'm trying to finish uh jojo's bizarre adventure and i'm on season three it's just it's getting around to it yeah uh so like one thing that i was gonna ask you is like how do you feel about like animes that you th like that are so similar or it's that um, kind of like repetitive formula like are you still as invested or are you still as excited about watching another anime that you're like, this is literally just like this other anime. And I'm not talking about like sequels. Like I'm not talking about Boruto where you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're literally watching like Naruto, I, but now I know it's a you kid. Mean. You're because essentially uh, one of the ones that we could easily point out is like sword art online remakes where people are constantly just making like, Oh, Hey, I'm trapped in a game or all these stat boosters. But I, I still give, if it looks like something I'd be interested in, I still give it a chance. 
And as long as it's kind of unique to its own story, I feel like the only way I might get upset that uh, something is like more of a repetitive is if they literally just like, if there was like another anime where it was like, Oh no, we're trapped in a game and the creator trapped us in here. And now we've got to go through all these levels. I'd be like, yo, you guys just stole the entire premise of sword art. It's one thing to make an anime about living in like a fantasy world, like the video game world. It's a whole nother thing to completely just steal the concept though of like what sword art was about. But there's been other things like that, and a lot of people constantly uh, relate other animes to, to other, like, uh, was it Black Clover right now? Asta wants to be the Wizard King, and people are just like, oh, you know, like, this is the same thing that Luffy wants to do in, in One Piece. He wants to be the Pirate King. Or Naruto. Or, yeah, Naruto wanting to be the Hokage. Mm-hmm. So it's, I, there's a, sometimes, like, a lot of goals can kind of seem similar, but, I, again, each each anime still gives off its own unique vibe and you can always come back to the idea of people saying like, Oh, there's no more original ideas anyway. So it's, it's just kind of like it, as long as it's enjoyable to me, I don't necessarily always knock that stuff. And I'm definitely guilty of watching a lot of animes that are very closely like tied together. Like, yeah, this is similar, but also this formula just does it for me. And it's awesome. What about you? Yeah, I mean, like I said, th- w- like with this anime that I just finished, um, I got like enormous vibes of like this, like the story is so similar to Attack on Titan, but it was just different enough where I was like, the story's good, um, that I didn't really mind it too much, but like I could see like huge parallels between like certain characters and this anime and like Attack on Titan, um, and the thing is, like, like you were talking about Sword Art Online, is like, I really like those though. Like the, I got sucked into a video game, and I live in this video game, and I have to like level up, and get better, and all this stuff. Like, so for some reason, like those, I just don't mind. It's like, yeah, I just kind of just keep coming up, keep coming out with those. Like Bofuri, I love that one. Yeah, that one was awesome. Um, which, the actual name is like. I, I leveled up my defense so much because I don't want to get hurt or whatever. Yeah. Um, something along those lines. Yeah, yeah, something along those lines. Some of these animes have like crazy fucking names. They're so long. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I mean, honestly, there are no like original ideas now. Like even ideas that I've th- had myself, then later on I find out like, oh, there's already a movie that exists that's just like what I was thinking even though it was made like in the seventies or some shit. And it's like, I know I've never seen that movie, but it like everything, you know what? There's like that famous quote, like, uh, like I, I, I can, I'm going to like fuck this up. It's like good writers, write Like great writers steal or some shit like that. Or like good writers borrow, uh, uh, like great writers steal or something like that. It sounds like an awful quote, but I mean, like, again, I guess I get the, the idea behind it. Though. Yeah. It's like uh, somebody has like a really good idea. Just take that idea and then just build off of it. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't really at mind. the end of the day, you still got your own spin on it. Like, it's just kind of like idea is such like a broad term to be like, Hey, you stole my idea. It's like, no, like I, but like my story is my own thing. So like, yeah. But, uh, well, one thing I do want to say, because, uh, just as uh, like we talked a little bit about By Me, which is a video game, and then we jumped into the anime segment. There's one thing, like kind of talking about regurgitating like a lot of the same animes that have like the same concept or the same style and stuff. Um, a lot of anime games, uh, like video games that come out, end up doing a lot of like Dynasty Warriors style, like uh, fighting, and, or like play style. I mean, so you're all you're doing is fighting these hordes of enemies that really don't really do that much damage to you. And then there'll be like one super powered character from probably from the anime where the fight is maybe decent, but really not that well. I'm extremely like tired of constantly getting those types of games. So what anime would you want to see like be turned into a game? And also how would you want it to be like, what type of new play style would you want to see? for this specific anime that you want to see turn into a game. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Cause it, yeah, most of the anime games that like I've seen are like all like dynasty warrior type, which was that called? Like command and conquer. I don't know. That, that no, might no, no. be right. Com- command and conquer. Yeah. I think something it's closer else. to like Starcraft. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, most of them have been like, like I've seen like the, like the bleach one. And then there was like the, like a one piece one that was just like that too. I think there's also, uh, uh, a black, the black clover game, I think was also similar to that. But yeah. Um, I don't know. I've heard that the attack on Titan games aren't like that and they're actually pretty good, but I haven't played either one of them. I heard the newest one wasn't that bad, but the older ones were kind of wonky. Okay. I mean, like, yeah, I don't know. It just sometimes you're like, some of these games just feel like impossible to turn into. Like, how are you going to get like good mechanics for the, the, the ODM gear that, that they use in attack on Titan? Like, I, I don't know. Um, like that's hard. Cause they've either done that and they've also done a lot of like fighting style games. Like you could go to as easy as like the Budokai games. Yeah, I was gonna say like all uh, all the, of the, the Dragon Tenkaichi Ball Z or games. Tenkaichi, however yeah. you choose to pronounce it. Those games, obviously, you got a way more mobility than you had in the original Budokai games. Uh, I think the My Hero Academia games again is just one on one fighting. Uh, the Ninja Storm games are like one-on-one fighting, just a little bit more area to kind of move around with. That's the Naruto ones, right? Yeah. The fairy tale game was played more like uh, like a JRPG action adventure, kind of like um, like Final Fantasy, like turn, turn-based turn style combat. I just feel like you wouldn't be able to do a good anime video game unless you were doing your own story. Like it would have to be completely separate from the anime because you would get upset if you were like, man that's not the way that he defeats him in the anime or some shit like that. And it's like, but a lot of these games, like we're saying, like Naruto is like all like these big battles and stuff like that. So it's like, it can only really be done in like Mortal Kombat Tekken style fights. So it's like, you know what, what really could you do? And that's probably why you either get either, or you either get that or you get, you know what like the one piece games are the one thing is i think the sword art games are played more like an rpg yes they are i because just, that's what the yeah. that's what the anime is i is just ended up they live like, in a video game world my good buddy uh chuck he ended up really liking those games and i he showed me a lot of it but it just seemed like you know you had your level grinding but also i think the combat to me just didn't seem very fun like i felt like if i were to try to play it i'd get bored too quickly yeah yeah i don't know it it'd be hard to like it's it's hard to think of like what type of like how how i would want something to like wh- how i would want an anime to be turned into a video game and like what anime specifically i don't know um, there's like other ones that I've wanted to play. Like I've wanted to play the My Hero one. I've wanted, wanted to play yeah, like the Naruto ones. I wanted to check it out, but again, not so. Like especially f- fighting games, I tend to lose interest in relatively quickly because I'll get through like the campaign and then it just turns into like, well, I can either try to invite friends to play it with, or what am I going to go online to you know fight against all these people that do nothing but play these games and just get my shit rock constantly. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah. It's like, to me, it's all about unlocking characters. Like that's why like super smash Bros. was like really fun. Cause there was like so many characters to unlock. So it was just like, you could just keep playing to keep unlocking characters. Quite, quite, quite. I, I agree with that statement. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, segment over. Yeah. All right. Moving right along, Tito. Me. What have you been up to? What have you been playing? What have you been doing? Uh, beside, like literally, just like I said, just I've been trying to finish JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, keeping up with my animes. Keeping up with the Kardashians. Yeah, keeping never, never watching that show. <laughs> uh, yeah, keeping up with my animes. Uh, what trying to get through iCarly on Netflix just to kind of pass the time. <laughs> some uh, some days, and then. All like my free time, I think last week went into as soon as I picked it up when we went to GameStop that day. Uh, Dragon Quest Eleven. I've been having so much fun with it. Uh, I came out. I don't know if it was last year or maybe even the year before that, but I just recently picked it up last week and been just mindlessly grinding into it. I've been really, really enjoying it. Uh, definitely gonna go for the platinum. But you also got the one that's like the one that has all the DLC, right? So, yeah, I think it was just like a one DLC thing. And that's just uh, you. 
it, it's just a, a tiny, I don't want to say it's a tiny thing. It's like, it, it's an extra kind of side quest thing that got added to it. So that might be a little time consuming if I don't do it all correctly throughout the game and I just have to go back and just revisit certain places, but I don't, I don't think it'll be that bad, but that's, that's pretty much all I have been up to. And then I restarted my Pokemon sun because I never finished it. So now I, I restarted. Sweet. Well, yeah, like I said, uh, I've been, well, I haven't really played Final Fantasy VII Remake since, like, I last talked about it. I've been wanting to. I've just been, like, super busy uh, with a bunch of cleaning. And then, like I said, I've been watching those two animes, um, which are now, which I said now I'm finished with. Um, I've watched a little bit uh, more of a few other animes that I've already watched. I've watched, like, the newest episode of Attack on Titan, and I've watched, like, the newest episode of ReZero that was out for me. Um, haven't really been watching a lot of TV. Um, movies. Oh, uh, with uh, Disney, my little Disney recap. Um, I've been... I'm in... I'm still in the early 90s, so I watched Pocahontas and... Toy Story, and let's see what else. I thought that was it because yeah. I remember you sending me yeah the Pocahontas Snapchat. and Toy Story yeah because mm-hmm. I already talked about the Return of Jafar in a Goofy movie right yeah and then yeah. I remember you sent me that Snapchat of uh, the the Mrs Nesbit scene yes. from from Toy Story yes dude like just that- following that scene too like Buzz would you get up here and give me a hand. <laughs> But, <laughs> that's really funny. This is serious, Buzz. But there was like some like I just I I just love love watching kids movies as an adult now, understanding adult jokes. Like I you know, I remember the you know the whole Woody calling Buzz Mr. Light Beer. Like that's funny. But in that scene, the Mrs. Nesbitt scene where Buzz is missing the arm and he's having tea, he says uh, it's all gone. Oh, it's gone. Bye bye. Woo. See ya. And then, you know, what he's like, he's like, one minute you're defending the whole galaxy. And suddenly you find yourself sucking down Darjeeling with, and he says, Marie Antoinette and her little sister, because both the dolls are missing their fucking heads. And this was the first time that I noticed it and I caught it and I was like, holy shit. And I was laughing so hard. History jokes in Toy Story. I mean, yes. I feel like they ha- they had to, especially because you know that parents are taking their kids to see those movies when they first came out. Yeah, like yeah. They had to sprinkle in like some good humor for for the adults. I love that though. I love that the you know the Disney writers thought of that for back then. Yeah, it's really it's funny. Fantastic. Um, so next I have to watch Aladdin and the King of Thieves, which is the third one, which is where Robin Williams actually did come back to reprise his role as the genie because he didn't in the second one, Return of the Jafar. Did you mention why? Did you say it was just something? Like, I think he just had like some sort of like, I don't know, maybe he wanted more money. Maybe he just had some sort of like fight with uh, Disney. Disney. Oh, I don't know. Okay. All I know is that there's like a whole bunch of like unreleased stuff where like Robin Williams was like dropping F-bombs and all this stuff as genie. Um, so that like... I'd like to see a lot of that stuff. I think that'd be like really funny. And like, I don't know if like Disney will release any of that because it's not going to release on a PG movie or whatever. True, true, true. Um, but then after that is James and the Giant Peach, and I literally have probably not seen that in easily fifteen years. Such a great movie. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's like I said, I've really been playing too many video games and just kind of been watching a lot of anime. Not really too much TV or anything. Well, Junior, speaking of video games, which, uh, I mean, right now we're both, uh, have like, both Final Fantasy VII and Dragon Quest XI are JRPGs, which yes. are heavily filled with bosses. I thought, for the podcast this week, we talk about bosses. We haven't done that yet, and it's actually one of my favorite things when it comes to amazing video games that just, you know, tickle me pink. Is that the phrase? That's the phrase, right? Tickle me pink. Sure, no. isn't it? No, I, th- I think it's just like they tickle my fancy. Is it tickle my fancy? It's yeah. not tickle me pink. No. Okay, they tickle my fancy. I think tickle your pink is your vagina. No, 
tickle, don't think that's what it is. They tickle your pink. I don't know. I don't know. Two in the pink, one in the sink. No, that's different. That's completely different. That's the shocker. Okay. Well, I'm shocked that you said <laughs> tickle me pink. <laughs> I swear. I think tickle me pink. I don't know. Come I don't know. Maybe. Mind. Anyways, bosses, video games. <laughs> Uh, so we, uh, we went ahead and, uh, we kind of, we posted up, uh, a list, kind of got it out in front of us. You guys can't see it. We can see it. Don't worry. We'll explain it. But, uh, well, we'll get, we'll get it going along. We, we kind of have, uh, things, uh, marked down and in a nice, uh, little se- sequential order for everyone. So at the top of a list, we start with, uh, generation one video games, which for us was along the lines of, you know, like N64, uh, PlayStation and other consoles that came out at the same time as that. So uh, we'll start with you, Junior. What was your, what was it? Was it your your favorite or your hardest boss? Yeah, it was my Gen hardest, one? hardest boss. It was for like Gen hardest one. bosses for Gen for, One. Yeah. What do you got? So I put down the Master Hand from Super Smash Brothers, Nintendo sixty four. Okay. Now you mentioned Super Smash. So who were you going through? On what was it called? It was, it was called Arcade, right? Yeah. So okay, so who was your character that you went? Fox. All right. Uh, how many lives did you give yourself? I don't know, three. Three. Yeah. Okay. Maybe five. So what? What was your standard of winning then? Like, could you make it to Master Hand with all three lives? Or I don't remember, dude. That was so long ago. We're talking about like playing in the like early or the mid nineties or whatever. Um. Yeah, I mean, maybe I would lose, like, one. I mean, I was pretty good, and, like, Fox was my dude. Like, that was the guy that I was, like, very confident in my abilities with. And um, so, yeah, I was pretty good. So maybe I lost one, but maybe I made it all the way to the end without losing any. It just kind of depended, too, on who you might end up having a fight. Um, DK was also kind of a bitch, but... uh, Like, giant DK, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I was about to say, like, just the character in general, Giant T. Yeah, Giant TK was hard. Uh, I definitely remember feeling completely defeated if, you know, we you lost all your lives. Continue, and then you had to, like, come back to face off against the Master Hand again. Yeah, I, if Master I could, Hand is hard. If I I remember, I think, we, we used to always play with five lives. Mm-hmm. And, you know, back probably when we first started playing, before we really had any type of skill set for the game. And then eventually playing it with three lives, I think, was the easiest way to end up unlocking the uh, the characters. Right. Because I, I, as far as I remember, there was a, a very long time where we, like, never unlocked Ness. We'd always get Luigi, Jigglypuff. I think we were beyond excited when we got Captain Falcon. And then it was like, Ness was the one that we just... Falcon went, Punch! Falcon Kick! Yeah. Eh. Show your moves. Yeah, like my I the move that I hated the most was the one where like well getting slapped. Yes. No no that one that one? That one, no no no. Getting slapped and the one where the one where he would like use his two fingers and then be like and just oh, kind of like he would walk and then just yeah. kick you. Or well, no 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 oh, when he'd spin, spin around yes, and like yeah. stamp on you. Yeah, I yeah. hated that. Oh, and there was another thing too is we were never like very good about using our shield. No, so, I, well, to this day I never. You don't. <laughs> to block. this day I don't like block, don't block ever. <laughs> I just dodge roll. If I can't dodge roll, then I'm just getting fucked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. 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 Yeah. I definitely remember that. I uh, I always went with Samus and just doing you know my up B spin and then just kind of like doing down B and dropping bombs as I'm falling mm-hmm. was kind of like my go to to do a bunch of damage if I wasn't like trying to charge up the blast before I, I shot it at him uh but yeah okay, yeah best master hand is good uh I had uh grunty from banjo kazooie mm. did you did you ever face no. it okay i never so, beat that game all the way let i mean me, we played it so the thing was like we shared all those games, so yeah. we like played them together. So it was just kind of like, "Hey, we finally made it to the final boss," and then it was like, "All right, it's your turn." And then if you beat it, I wasn't like, "Oh, damn it! I wish I could. I wish I had my turn to try to beat it." It was just like, "Cool, we beat the game," and that was it. Yeah. So there was like multiple phases to to defeating her, and I I might have completely. I might have forgotten. I think like, so the first phase was she's kind of like 
she's flying around because you're at the top of her tower. So you, she's flying around and just throwing magic at you. And so you're dodging it. And then eventually she'll throw a homing one. And then you just have to turn on your gold feathers, which make you invincible. And when she throws the homing one, you she stays in place. So as soon as you deflect it with your gold feathers, you shoot an deflect. egg at her. Yeah, you shoot an egg at her. And then like she takes damage. So you do that. It was like three or four times. And then you get a flying pad. Now that you have the flying pad, you have to follow her around while she's on her broom. And you remember how difficult it was to like, like pinpoint accuracy fly. Cause then you have to use I flying think, is still hard in video yeah. games, dude. It was called like the, I think it was called like the Kazooie beak buster maybe, but it was just, a, you would hit B and cause it would go and you just launch at her. So if you missed, like it was like, all right, now I got to try to set it up again. Worst yeah. thing, if you were angled too far down and you did that, you would hit, hit like the bottom of the sky where it's like you fell off and you died and then you got to start the fight over. So Mm -hmm. after you finish that, there ended up being a bunch of Jinjo statues that just kind of appeared around the tower and you had to like fill them up with eggs as you kind of like, again, dodged her attacks. And then once you filled all of them up, like the mighty Jinjo came out and then like she got hit for the last time. So but yeah, in- incredibly hard, especially for an N sixty four game. For like when we got it, I we didn't I didn't beat it by no means, shape or form when we were first playing. It was definitely way later. I revisited, but yeah, that was that was my Gen one. Sweet, sweet. All right, why don't you tell me your Gen two? Gen two has to be uh, Sephiroth, Kingdom Hearts one for the PlayStation two. Uh, to this day, I have not beat him. He's- Are you maxed out? I, yeah, I've totally tried to fight him, maxed out, uh, level 99. Uh, it's still just, it's ridiculous. Like, his attacks do an insane amount of damage. I One thing that I never got good at, especially in Kingdom Hearts 1, is, like like you said. Is the I, game. I never got no, good at it. Shut up. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, so, dodge rolling, you, you can do in Kingdom Hearts, but you yeah. can also block. So, uh-huh. if you tap square without using the joystick, you, you know, just bring up the Keyblade. Or you just have to, you know, time your dodges right mm-hmm. so you get um, the the iframes. And I was just, I couldn't time my dodge rolls right in that, and I wasn't good at blocking. Our younger brother, Brian, has beat Sephiroth, but he was good at, like, deflecting attacks with block or guard, I think it was called in that game. Yeah. So I just, I constantly got hit a bunch, would try to heal, then get caught up in, like, the explosion attack he would use. Like, I never got anywhere near where I think he started using a move that immediately took you down to like one HP and you just had to be ready to heal yourself. So I've definitely only fought Sephiroth like maybe three times. Yeah, no, I tried him. I tried him a lot and I was, I just couldn't beat him. And even in the, in the remix version, like kingdom hearts 1.5 remix, you get a Keyblade for defeating him, And I, I don't, I don't have it. I don't have it. Yeah. Like I only did it just so, just so I could see the cutscene. And so that I could hear one wing angel while you're fighting him. But then like, I was like, all right, yeah, I keep getting my ass kicked. I'm never going to beat this boss. Like just not going to try it. Uh. Okay. So I also have a kingdom hearts boss, but for uh, my um, second gen, I have Maleficent from kingdom hearts and you have to fight her in dragon form. Uh, you also fight her in, yeah, you also it, fight her in, in, in her witch form or yes, whatever form in her normal form. But the dragon form is the one I'm talking about. That's the one that is just fucking ridiculously hard. Also, if this anyone, bitch is just always lighting me on fire. Also, if anyone wants to reach out, uh, let us know which Riku fight was harder. Is it the first time you fight him in Hollow Bastion or the second time when he's like fused with Ansem? We're talking to you, James, because you said you just beat Kingdom Hearts the Ooh, first yes. one for the first time. Definitely. So let us know. Also, just tell us which if if it's not them, who's your who's the hardest boss there? But yeah, yeah. I, there was a ta- there was a few like yes, Kingdom definitely. Hearts has like honorable mentions like Ursula. God, I hate her. It's terrible. <laughs> You said the, the Chernabog. Ha <laughs> ha mm, not very tasty. <laughs> I hated her. And uh an Ansem. Just that that's just the end fight. There's just like eighteen different forms of Ansem. On Guardian. But yeah, uh definitely so you've come this far and still you understand nothing. I love I love that game. Yeah, yeah. The Kingdom Hearts series is fantastic. But yes, uh I 
cannot tell you how many times I was like, I was like, oh my God, I'm getting so close. Fuck, I fuck, I'm on fire again. God damn it, sorry, jump, jump, God damn, fuck. Uh, what yeah. was it? Was it, hated it? Was it Kingdom Hearts 1 or 2 where you like, you get on the Hydra's back? Get on, no, that was, uh, you had to defeat a boss like with a combo finisher. Like it didn't just have one HP, you had to finish a combo f- for it to be like the final hit. Wasn't that, I think that was Kingdom Hearts 2. Wasn't yeah. all bosses like that? Yes. And you I had like to magic, kill all magic bosses also with that. counted. Like you could use magic yes. to hit it, but it like. Which was awesome because you could just shoot like a, one of the, you know, fire, fire, uh, and then you'd be like, yes, I, I did yeah. it. But like sometimes I'd be like annoyed. Like why? Especially because I had. In was Hercules, what are the, in, in the Coliseum, with you, when you had to fight Yuffie, yeah. and uh, and I was like, dude, I have to finish him in a fucking combo? Are you fucking kidding me? Well, because like, there's a, I think it was called like MP Berserker, where it was, it was either MP Berserker or it's a different one, where you you have like an, a combo that never ends as long as your MP is charging. Mm-hmm. And it'd be like, why aren't you dying? What is going on here? And so, yeah. But yeah, that was, that was not fun. I wish I would have. Yeah. Knowing a little early on to just hit him with magic. <sighs> anyway. All right. Moving on to Gen 3, Junior. What do you got for us? I have uh, Quaylag from uh, Dark Souls, the first one, which is that spider yeah. bitch. Yeah. Chaos, Chaos, which I think it's Chaos, which Quaylag. Yeah. She was. I like, hated it. I hated her, that boss. She had the long, flowy hair that covered her nips. Yeah. And the hair was like glued to her nips because they never moved. Not that I needed them to move. <laughs> I'm just saying they didn't move. I mean, uh, yeah, she just lava moves, just fucking. Yeah, and you like, get, like every boss is like, get get behind him, get behind him and attack him from the back. And then this bitch was a, was just, it was a giant spider. And then it was a humanoid body, but just, just the top half was just situated perfectly. On the head of this spider. Yeah, which was kind of like, it, it was a little weird. Like, it would have been, I feel like, I, I don't want to say, like, physiologically correct, but it would have been a little, like, if it was on, like, the body part, and then maybe there was also, like, a head attached like to the Like a body. minotaur? But except it was a human and a spider. But it wasn't. But uh, but it, no, so if it would have, if you that'd be like having a human head just sitting on top of the minotaur's head. That's what, like, was weird. Yeah. Because the body yes. was attached to the top of, like, the head. Right. So, yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, this kind of looked like a minotaur, but if it was a spider, except for the spider also had a head. Yeah. Because um, we've I've we've had, there's been other bosses that are half human, half spider, but yes. there's no spider head. But right. Quilag had the spider head, and it, yeah, it spewed lava, which yes. which hurt. Which was terrible. It was hot. It yes. was not, not, and not in the good way. It was in the, in the, yes. in the burn your skin off. Yes. That boss is terrible. What about you? Uh, I had from uh, Demon Souls, uh, Old King Alant, and for I, if you've played the remake recently, and maybe you didn't play it originally when it was on PS3 because it was originally, you know, yeah, for the PS3. Uh, one like the only boss that I know of in a game that had you, you know, grinding levels and leveling your character up. He has a move that it's like a it's like a rushing grab attack. Like I think you kind of see him like he'll do like a wind up. And then he shoots at you, and if he grabs you, he steals a soul level from you. So, like, an entire level. So, if you're level 99, like, leveled out, and he hits you with this, you're down to level 98. And it's not like he steals what? those souls from you, and when you beat him, you get him back. No, no, no. He just steals the level. So, like, that was horrible. Like, but, like, also one of the coolest mechanics for, like, a boss to have but definitely, yeah, for for me, for Gen 3, like, that boss was, yeah, extremely difficult. And that was back in the day. Like, Demon Souls, yeah, you could play cooperatively, but that was back in a time where, like, I didn't really have, like, online. So that was a boss that I had to, you know. I didn't just, really have friends. Right, right, right. So that's not what I said. Oh, okay, sorry. I mean, it's true. No, I'm just kidding. I have friends. Guys, I'm I'm cool. My mom thinks I'm cool. Uh, but Only <laughs> your mom thinks you're cool. <laughs> What about, uh, was it Gen 4 me now? Yes, Gen uh, 4 for you. For PlayStation 4, I still didn't beat her uh, for reasons I don't want to get into. Uh, Sigrun, the queen of the Valkyries in God of, in the newest God of War. Holy crap. I hate her. And I have like two, two of my close friends have platinumed uh, the new God of War. 
and they played the game on the hardest difficulty because it's one of one of the trophies is to beat the game on on the hardest difficulty. So they also beat the Valkyries on the hardest difficulty, including the Queen. And it's oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. I think I played on normal like my first time playing through, and I was just like, oh, you know, when I go for the plat, like I'll just, you know, I'll just uh b- just beat the game on hard mode. I won't do any of the optional stuff. But yeah, no, just horrible. The every move set that all the other Valkyries have, she also had and could do them. So you had to be ready at the drop of a hat to be able to counter or dodge mm-hmm. out of any of these. And the worst move was the Valkyrie that was in Muselheim, which is like uh, where uh, uh, Surtur is from, the the flame titan that you see in uh, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Uh, you don't have to fight him, but she, like, like, so it's basically like a, a flame Valkyrie. And she has this move where she'll fly up and you have like half a second to dodge. If you dodge too early or too late, she stomps on you and then kicks her heel into your throat and you just have to tap square to get out of it. She takes so much health every goddamn time that she <laughs> does it. And the queen of the Valkyries does more damage, takes even more health. Oh my god, dude! Ah, oh, I hate then it. Just a trace comes over and goes, "Father!" and revives you, and well, then gives that, you yeah, like no health. That's if you had the revival stone on you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And there was like two different types. It was one revival stone gave you like I think like half health. The other one gave you like maybe a third or a quarter of health. Yeah, but yeah, it gave yeah. you like full. Uh, what was it called? Spartan rage. Yeah, in the last whatever one? it was. Whatever it was. Yeah. So rage god mode. Yeah, I don't. I I can't remember how many times I tried her, but I I didn't get to beat her, and then I lost all the data. So. So that was, yeah, definitely. From, I don't want to talk about it. Junior, what's your gen for? <laughs> um, a boss that I hated the most in PlayStation 4 so far. Well, I guess, well, there's still games coming out. But it's Rom the Vacuous Spider from Bloodborne. I hate that boss. Hate, hate, hate. Double like, hate. First of all, it's I hate spiders. <laughs> it's a huge fucking giant spider with little tiny fucking legs. It's like a huge body, huge head, little less tiny fucking legs. The problem is shit ton of eyes. The <laughs> shit ton of eyes. <laughs> Obscene amount of eyes. The problem is number one, it has like a fucking shitload of minions, a bunch of fucking other little spiders. All of their heads are made of like solid adamantium concrete rock. <laughs> I forgot so, about that. So you can't fucking hit them in the head. So you have to. You well, you can, but you don't do as much damage. Yeah, you do like five damage. But like, so you have to get around to the back. Like, this is one of those enemies where like, it's like, it's like the the creators of this video game was like, you know how everybody always says like, let's go to the back and hit the enemy from the back. We're going to make it so you have to do this for this Smack fucking enemy. that booty. Smack. Yeah. Smack that. Smack that all on the floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I. Oh, God. So. In the first iteration, you just, like, you shit on her at the first part. You take out, you have to, like, take out most of the little fucking spiders. And then you, like, you leave, like, two or three just so that more don't respawn. And then you just fucking No, 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 no. no. They always respawn. Every no, 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 time no, no, no. Yes, yes. Yes, but, o- that. but only after, it. only after Rom disappears as they respawn. There was a glitch in that boss fight where if you... You can attack it while it's disappearing and you're still doing damage. Not just that. You could do a certain thing so that it never actually vanished to the next spot. So it was like stuck trying to teleport to the next spot uh, spot in the boss battle. And you could just sit there and keep hitting it. Well, I never figured that out. But anyway, I would just you I would destroy on the first part. But as soon as Rom gets to that second part, now she's fucking raining goddamn meteors down on you or she's fucking summon them out of the fucking ground. And you have to watch out for that and the fucking spiders. And then the little ones will fucking do this dive bomb on you where they just jump up and fucking dive bomb you with their fucking hard ass heads. We and I think I work on your vocabulary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to yeah, make it bigger, right? Cuz I'm just using fuck too much. Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, fuck you, Tito. <laughs> and fuck around the vacuous spider. Move on. Um all right. Now, uh, so now so it's your hardest. It. What was what yeah. was your hardest boss? Like just of all time, my what? hardest boss ever because it took me so fucking long to beat this boss is Capital B from Ukulele. Oh. Which is funny because 
you yeah, were saying multiple gr- forms. You were saying like, Gruntilda. Yeah. That one has like eight. Like I'm exaggerating. It's not eight, but it's probably like five or six. Yeah, but I was like, dude, at, when I first started fighting this boss, and like I beat the first part, and then I got to the second part, and then I was like, dude, Tito, I got killed. Like, was I getting close? And then you're like, yeah, no, there was like five more fucking seconds. <laughs> I was like, God, fucking damn it. Yeah, it's like you had to. First, you had to like just dodge out of the way, and then he would like spin around, and then once he once he was bit, like dizzy, you'd go up and hit him. Then you have to like dodge these bees, and then you'd hit that, and then all of a sudden all the walls would break out, and then you're like in this area, and then you just have to like jump every time he like dive bombs, and you just like evade the little shock waves that come out. So then then you then you do that, then all of a sudden, uh, like the fourth one. He is like shooting stuff at you and you have to dodge the little dive bombs that he's doing. And then finally there's like the fly one where you have to have enough fucking stamina because you throw Laylee up in the air, which is the little bat. Yeah. And you have to like fly around with Laylee while he's shooting these um, missiles like missiles basically. at you. And you have to you have to keep circling around so you can make the missiles hit him. Instead of you. And then if you run out of stamina, then you land and you can either land in the area, but you might accidentally land in the acid, which will just like fucking kill you. Yeah, I hated, I hated that boss, but I beat it and I did get the platinum on that game. Yes, yes, you did. Uh, I got to go with the Orphan of Coast from Bloodborne. Uh, he, that's DLC, right? That was, he was the final DLC boss. Yeah, so I don't even know because uh, I never played the DLC. I th- I think a lot of people either they either say that it's him or Ludwig the Holy Blade, which is uh, the first DLC boss. Uh, it's one or the other. E- even if you summoned someone to help you during that fight, it takes a very it's it's just a slight mistake in timing of your dodge. Or not realizing that you're in like his hitbox area and he's fast enough to completely just melt your health if you're not paying attention. Uh, the and he's not only is he fast, his like the second phase of the fight, his weapon gets bigger and he gets faster. And it's just it, the the difficulty spike in that is insane. I'm pretty sure when I beat him, like I definitely got the final hit in and you know was doing a lot of damage during the first part of it but the second part of the the fight uh the guy that I had summoned you could just tell like people that try to summon for that fight are just people that have been like playing it like a bunch so, like they just know the game so well it's like yeah I'll get summoned for this fight and I'll help and win because I've beaten them so many times mm-hmm. so I I relied on the the character like the obviously the online player that I summoned for the fight a lot to to get that win, but yeah, that was definitely the hardest the hardest boss I ever fought. Uh, scrolling right along to uh, easiest, the easiest boss fight that I've ever had, um, the original Crash Bandicoot, uh, the the insane trilogy uh, that got remade for the PS4. Mm-hmm. Uh, the very first boss at the after the first five levels, uh, Papu Papu. All you gotta do is jump on him. He spins his like staff around and then you just jump on him. I think it's like three times and the the boss fight is over. It's it's a cakewalk. Like yeah, it's it's a PS1 game that was, you know, definitely for kids back in the day, but yeah, it's like with my what I from what I can remember, it that was super simple, very easy. What about you? So I I got a throwback here also. The easiest boss Cloud and Candy from Yoshi's Story. Oh, you remember that the yes, little popcorn ball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all you do is just have to keep shooting your tongue and licking and getting the popcorn pieces to come off. Yep. Until it's just like the little piece, and you just eat it, and then it's done. Yeah. Yeah. That get that is just like blam 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 blam, and then yeah, that's it. The, 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 it's over. Meh. Yeah. Meh. <laughs> that game was so fun. Yes, but yes, also it was. very frustrating. Yeah. But we were also like eight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh so yeah. Uh, All right. Well, moving th- along here. Yeah, what do you got now? The dumbest the dumbest thing that you had to do for a boss. Um and I put down the anchor boss from the game Control, which I also have a platinum. Um beating you. Shut up. And that in uh, for that boss, there's four different platforms and it's just this giant ball in the middle of the room which you can fall 
but you also have like by this point you have like these hover moves so you can like hover off the ground because in that game you have like telekinetic powers and stuff which is really really cool so if you haven't played control totally play that game it's awesome yeah it's like a third person shooter with yeah telekinetic like powers, badass yeah. powers and there's like tons of cool gun like you have one gun but you can like it modifies in like tough like five different guns it's awesome if you haven't played it you should play it um but anyway it's like this giant ball that's in the middle of the room and there's like clocks everywhere well there's like these four specific clocks that you have to when it fires at you you just have to not be in front of it and then jump back to that platform and then just throw the clock right into its mouth and if you throw the four clocks that are on the four different platforms into its mouth, then you win. Like, I was getting my ass kicked by the boss when I first tried to fight it, but I think I was just, like, too low level, or I just hadn't figured out how to do it. Yeah, I but, watched you but die then, yeah, so many you times, watched me. and then I was just like, hey, have you done this yet? And you were like, no, I guess I could go and give it a try. You did it. It was like a yes. cakewalk. Like, yes, why I did were it like you struggling yes. with this? Yes. So, yeah, that... That was like that was uh, probably the dumbest boss uh, that I've ever had to face. What about uh, you? For me, is definitely so. I kind of wrote down two because you reminded me of one, and I was like, I can't believe. But originally, so I put down Pinwheel from uh, Dark Souls One, and the reason I put Pinwheel down is because for all of the bosses and like their difficulties in the the Dark Souls, Demon Souls, or um, what is it? Oh, I forget. Bloodborne. Uh, yeah, Bloodborne, Bloodborne. But I was trying to think of what they called those games. Soulsborne. Soulsborne game, yeah. Uh, You've had this yeah, yeah, problem before yeah, on the so, podcast. So, so Soulsborne games, uh, it was just so easy. You walk down and you just you just spank the hell out of him. I can't even remember what his attack was because he was just so weak. I think he eventually made like clones of himself. And even then it wasn't too hard you could easily quickly find like which one you had to just destroy and just uh, just a cakewalk like it's super disappointing boss fight for a dark souls game but i also have uh you yevin which is like the final boss of final fantasy 10 Mm -hmm. reason being is uh there are enemies in that game that are zombies or like undead and there's also an attack like an ability that your characters can learn that make enemies undead and for those of you that don't know, in Final Fantasy games, when an enemy is like undead, you can cast like uh, like heal or cure, and instead of healing the enemy, you actually do damage towards it. However, there's also spells for reviving fallen allies. So, if a character is undead and you cast, you know, uh, you know, life revive revivify whatever the spells called in that game, it's usually like a one hit KO. So the final boss, Yu Yevin, in Final Fantasy X has 99,999 like, life. And if you use zombie attack on him and then cast life, you immediately beat him. And it's just, if this is the final boss and you gave us one of the easiest outs to beat it, and it's, I don't know. The fight before that, yeah, is incredibly difficult, but it was just like, I can't believe that this is what you guys ended up having to do. So I had that on Dumbest. Uh, but moving uh, the show right along, uh, then we got our favorite boss. For me, it was definitely uh, Sekiro with uh, Ishin Ashina, which was like the final boss. Uh, it was just kind of like a culmination of the skills that you had put together in getting good at that game because that game is literally all about getting good. There's no part of that game where you can just you really just try to cheese things, especially not with the final boss and being able to deflect and parry all the attacks to eventually be able to like almost do minimal damage, but you break their poise so you can do that, that killer hit that takes down one of their life bars. It's completely rewarding. And just a play style. I had so much fun with that game. Definitely one of my proudest platinums. Uh, yeah. My favorite boss goes to, uh, to, to Ishinashita from Sekiro. What about you? Um, I put down a uh, father guest coin from Bloodborne. Really? Yeah, because as your favorite boss. Yeah, because at first that he was the boss that almost made me give up on Bloodborne. I've like never given up like on a Soulsborne game because I've like, I've loved them all. But like this was the first of its kind. This was like a new game because it was like 
there was only like a certain amount of weapons at the beginning. And it was like, there's two ways that you can use them. But yeah, when I first fought Father Gascoigne, I just kept losing to him. And I stopped playing. I stopped playing for like three days before I gave it another try. And then I finally beat him. Of course, there was a whole thing about the music box that I didn't even know about. Um, cause I like bought the game, like brand new, didn't even know anything about that. Hadn't looked anything up or anything. Just try to beat them. Um, but the, the reason why is because like, I think like werewolves are like the coolest, like mythical creature. And like father guys going like basically turns into a werewolf, like midway through the fight. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, even though he was like hard and almost made me, that's kind of why, like, he's like my favorite. Cause it's like the only boss that's like ever really made me be like, do I actually want to play this game? Because if this is the third boss or the second boss and I'm having this much fucking difficulty with it, what the fuck does that say about the rest of this game? So I think yeah. that's why I I put him down as like my favorite uh, boss of all time. Okay. Yeah, I can. I can dig that. All right. So what about your coolest ne- looking next? Yeah, my coolest looking boss. Um. I put down the nameless King from uh, dark souls three because I mean, honestly he looks like he could be in other games. Like he could definitely be like a final fantasy boss or like this is armor that you could get and make it in like monster hunter. You know what I just thought of? And this is just going to suck for you. If you decide to do it, although it would be cool for like the green screen, you could totally be putting up like, pictures of each of the bosses that we talk about yeah it could Tito, but yeah why would yeah. you make more work for me <laughs> because it'd just be really cool uh, for me it would be um in the surge 2 the final boss it's like brother eli in like an angelic form he's just got he's got this badass nanite armor and then followed by these giant nanite wings and then this huge angelic like nanite sword it it, it like the first time i saw it it was just blew my mind i was like this is the final boss like this is insane this looks crazy i love every part of it and then even like playing new game plus and now having like that weapon like i didn't even like if i got a new weapon like especially even when the dlcs came out i was like i don't want anything else i have my favorite weapon right here uh that was the coolest looking for the ugliest looking boss i gave it to the last of us part two the rat king because that thing was grotesque not even a rat yeah, I don't. Well, I I think it's just like the Rat King is just supposed to be obviously some, uh, like some bottom dweller thing that like no one really knows about. That's supposed to be like mm-hmm. disgusting looking and that is disgusting. I mean, they don't call it the Rat King in the game. That's, no, no, no. Yeah. That's what the like the developers called yeah. it, the Rat King. So I think that's the trophy might be called. Also might be that, called that yeah. too. So it was that boss um, was also difficult. Yes, pretty hard. Yes. What about you? What was your your ugliest boss? Uh, the one reborn from Bloodborne. Oh yeah, wait, yeah, that because that's first like of all. Do you have four Bloodborne old... bosses on your list, or is that just three? Uh, that's three. Okay, three. yeah. Rom, Gascoigne, and now yes, the one, the one reborn. Uh, yeah, it's like some big. It's basically just. It's it's almost just like yours. It's just a bunch of bodies. Yes, one hundred percent. That true. are just all smashed together. The giant legs are made of legs and arms, and they just just stamp down. Not to mention that there's like those freaking uh, mages that are like up on the top. So when you're fighting the boss, there's like six mages, three on either side of you. They're just raining down magic on you while you're fighting this boss. You're like, are you serious? As if this boss isn't hard enough already. Yeah, that just now, reminds me of the Tower Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Demon Souls, they do the same thing. And I know that there's a trophy for beating the Tower Knight without killing those uh, mages. Really? No, yeah, it's archers. There's archers. A yeah. Thing? Okay, I did not know that. All so right. uh, yeah, so I I already know that when I try to fight the Tower Knight, I have to like probably level grind just so that I can take him on without taking out the archers, so I can get that trophy. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm definitely gonna try to go for that platinum, baby. Wait. You know it. Um, next up on the list, uh, J- your, J- your favorite JRPG boss. Um, my favorite JR and I wrote down JRPJ because I'm a jackass. <laughs> JRP jackass. <laughs> Is the name of the podcast. <laughs> my favorite JRPG boss 
is uh the Adam Man choice from Final Fantasy 15. Oh my god, I hated that. Because it was so fucking cool. Did I tell you what happened huge to me? Fucking mountain. No. I was fight I I'm pretty sure I did. Probably. I was fighting it and I had maybe like a third of its health down. And I got knocked back to the point where I left the area of the fight and it regained oh, shit. all its health. Because it's what it's like what an hour long boss fight. Yeah, right? like if yeah, well, it lasts if you do what I did. Yeah, but I think they patched that, so you can't do that anymore. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's patched or not, but yeah, you can use those. You can use the rings later on, and it's just the one. Yeah, you use the ring, and what it does is it compresses the enemy. Until it gets so small that it basically just dies. How long did it take you? Like 10, 12 minutes? No, nah, it took me a little bit. I mean, maybe like 15, yeah. 20 minutes or so. But yeah, like you just have to basically just keep letting your like your MP or your AP or whatever uh, uh, regain your, your MP. Uh-huh. And then you just use that ring. And the only thing that compresses, because with all the other monsters or villains, like you compress their all of them. With the adamantoids, it's just his head that gets compressed because it's essentially a giant tortoise that has like a mountain, a literal fucking mountain on his back as his cool. shell. So yeah, what I think all I ended up doing was like getting it like I got it down to like fifty percent health and then before the crushed. before it okay. just died, before I crushed it and it died, and then I got the I think that was the last trophy that I needed for the platinum. Okay. Well cool. Um, but yeah, and I went, then I also went with Final Fantasy 15, uh, but I went with the Leviathan fight. That's um, an awesome fight. It, it, I was, it was nothing that I was expecting to happen in that game when it first came out. And it was a game that I've been waiting for, for, for like ever. And the game just looks fucking beautiful. Yeah. When it, when it, you finally happen, you know, you summon all of the, the Royal arms around you and then Noctis just starts flying around and you're just, you know, just beating the shit out of Leviathan. I think you end up, what, like, cutting off one of its fins, and then yeah, it, like, yeah, yeah. accepts you as, like, being worthy of it. But it was, I don't know. It was fantastic. Everything that happened with that, I had so much fun with it. It was also really sad at that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We won't ruin that if you haven't played it and you, you're a fan of those games. But uh, uh, moving things along, uh, my favorite button masher game, which usually just kind of translates to any game that just has, like, combos that are just, you know, tapping square or triangle constantly uh, some of my favorite bone mission games, is obviously the the God of War series or the or Devil May Cry, and for this one, I went with Virgil from the Devil May Cry series. Anytime the twin brothers have to fight against each other, it is always a fantastic fight. Um, specifically, I would probably go with Devil May Cry three. The final time that you and Virgil fight is definitely my favorite one. What about I, you? I think I only played maybe one of those games. I don't think I played it all the way. Through through you know what i think it's one of those games that we rented from video villa devil may cry 2 is the one yeah that, yeah we all got to we all got to pick one game to rent and devil yeah, may yeah. cry 2 was the one that i picked yeah i do remember playing it a little bit but yeah never really got into those never really got into those games a lot i like watching you play them because i like the story but i never really got into me playing them um for my favorite button mash boss i put down uh zeus in god of war 3 okay because at the end you just get to smash his fucking face in yes that is fantastic and it's just yeah it's just like fuck you for all of this shit um yeah i mean that that boss fight is just really really cool and it just like you get that you get that satisfaction of the screen just going red at the end mm-hmm. and then it just kind of leaves it up in the air and then you just didn't know until obviously we got well so you get that God secret ending where you kind of see like it seems like kratos obviously dragged himself off because right. you see the the blood moving or someone might have but yeah and now we have the new one i cannot wait for god of war ragnarok uh so last finally, but not least uh platformer so my favorite platformer boss well actually this is my most hated platformer boss, not my favorite, is Errol from Jack 3. That whole boss fight, just, you, to even get to the boss fight, God, I, I hate, I fucking hate cars. I, I hate <laughs> racing games. I hate when you have to do a race in a game as part of it. That's a whole thing in, like, Jack 2. But in Jack 3, you get this little dune buggy, which is just a shitty-ass traction, and you have to destroy all these crystals on this giant 
mech spider fucking thing that arrows on. Wait, did you have to use the dune bug? I thought you could pick a car. No, it's oh. the car that they give you. Oh, and, and I don't know. Maybe I could have jumped out of it. No, no, no. You can't because you start on the outside of the gate and you can't drive back in oh, because I okay, definitely okay. thought about it, like, I'm going to grab the, the fucking hopper one that shoots grenades. It'll be much easier, but no, you have to use a little dune buggy one that has like two turrets that just shoot like, I don't know, machine guns. And you have to like the crystals on the legs of this spider are like on the left, on the right, in front of it, some of them behind. So some of them are like really easy, but there's like 15 or 16 crystals total. You're, you're timed too, right? No. Well, you're not-, you're, you're not timed, but if this guy gets all the way back to the base, he'll destroy the base. So I mean, you don't so you see are- a time. Okay. You don't see one, but yeah. you are timed. And it took me like 15 tries easily when I just beat this game recently like to he, just he, get through that. He kept and, getting there or No, no, no. Oh, I okay. just kept I just kept dying. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cuz like he just keeps fucking shooting these bombs at you and shit. And then there's like parts where you like jump off a cliff. I'm like, "Well, I'm going to crash and explode." <laughs> and I would. And like I'd be so pissed cuz I'd be like, "Oh, there's only three crystals left. God damn it." And I keep trying to catch up to the leg, and every time I catch up to the leg, that leg fucking moves to the next part. I'm just like, "God damn it, why?" Yeah. And you have to like you like get the crystals are on the front. I like drive all the way up to the leg, then like pull the e brake and try to crank around and shoot in the crystals as fast as possible. Then you can like jump in the car too. And I was like, dude, I hate this shit. I fucking hate this. But yeah. as soon as I destroyed all the crystals, you get up on the like on the last part, beat them on my first try. Yeah. So fucking easy yeah, after very that. Easy. Uh, for me, definitely uh, one of my all time favorite platforming games is a uh, Hollow Knight. And the most difficult boss in that game, but also, again, just when you get a hard boss, you get that satisfaction when you finally beat them. Uh, uh, you got this thing called, like, a dream needle. So there were certain bosses that after you defeated them, it was either their corpse or you might be able to find them sleeping and you were able to kind of enter this dream world where you fought a much harder version of it. And uh, Nightmare Grim, holy shit, that guy so fast all of his moves that I had already like memorized to how to like perfectly dodge them completely new, even faster, even harder to dodge. Is that like the vampire one? He looks, he kind of looks like a vampire. Where He's he like, like shoots the, the laser beams like down. And you have to be like right in the middle of them. So you don't get hit. Is that the one? No, I, it's not laser beams. He like, it's spires. That yeah, 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 yeah. That one. The laser beams was a different guy. Um, so yeah, that, that was the hardest for me. Uh, you're thinking of, I think it's called the Radiant, and that's like the actual like kind of final boss. That's kind of like I would attune it to Bloodborne as the Moon Presence. Oh, okay. So okay. you don't have to fight the Radiant to beat the game. You could, you know, just fight. I think it's, I think it's literally the final boss is called like the Hollow Knight, and then there's a there's a part where, um, it gets knocked down, and you use the Dream Needle, and you enter the world where you fight the Radiant. I have gotcha. not beaten the Radiant, but it's only because like. I didn't know I could get to him originally. And like at this point now, I just haven't gone back, but that's it for the bosses. Uh, Please which, let us know. Yeah. What, let us uh, know about your bosses. Like, yeah. Tell us your favorite, favorite boss, ones. hardest boss, all that stuff. Any of the stuff that you agree with us or maybe or disagree. you disagree. Yeah. yeah. Maybe some bosses were extremely easy and me and junior just need to get good. Uh, yeah, let, let us, us know. know. All right. We said that at the same time. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, you know, we say a lot of things at the same time because we're brothers. Yeah. Um, all right, so last two segments of the podcast is uh, first Tito's movie review, which last week we didn't do because Tito hadn't watched the movie. Yeah, and Junior had promised not to say anything, and he said something anyways. But it was an accident. I didn't mean to. I just oh. forgot. I mean, I, dude, after like two hours, I just forget stuff. Yeah. All right, but anyway, Tito did watch it. I did. So the movie, the movie was Alpha. Yeah. Tito, what did you think? Uh, so there was definitely a part of me, like, I think the name didn't resonate, resonate with me, but the moment I saw the movie, not like the entirety, I meant like, you know, eh, cause I think you had it downloaded on your Apple yeah. TV. So like there was like a, like a DVD menu, essentially. Mm-hmm. I was just like, I think I remember this movie and yeah, I was right. You and dad did go see it. Yes, we did. Uh, it was dad and I enjoy like same type of movies like yeah, that. It was definitely the entire premise of the movie is essentially, uh, kind of like 
the domestication of like the first dog. Uh, I, I immediately got kind of like 10,000 BC vibes. But it's also it. like a coming of age story. Like, yes, but it's just, it's the domestication of the original dogs. And but, yeah, the main yeah. character gets separated from his hunting party because they think he's like dead. And then he has to like make it home on his own. And yeah, like you kind of see like the father's kind of displeased with how he is. And then is beyond proud that number one, he survived and was able to make it back home. Yeah. Um, but I told like right afterwards, I told Junior, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, you guys should because it's one of my favorite movies. Uh, the Good Dinosaur, which is a Disney, I think it's Disney Pixar. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the same movie, but obviously in this one, the it's like a, a thing. I don't know if they they ever say the name, but for all I know, it's like a brontosaurus, like in the, like a tiny little human who who's like the dog in uh, in the Good Dinosaur, and it's the same thing. He gets separated from his family and he has to make it back to. Uh, to his farm oh the only thing that's funnier i was just like the disney movie is way darker than you know alpha because in the good dinosaur the dad dies right away at the beginning so i thought that was kind of funny but that's like all i could think about like while i was watching alpha i was like this is just the good dinosaur so what's your rating for it it was a good movie i'll definitely i'd give it an eight i'd give it an eight eight point five maybe okay so IMDb gave it a 6.7. Really? They yeah. didn't like it at all? Well, I mean, so the, the thing, like we talked about, the thing about IMDb is, is it's based on ratings um, that that you have to have like an IMDb account. Mm-hmm. So the, the more people that rate it, that's how they get the rating for the movie. So IMDb has the score of 6.7. I also enjoyed the movie. I thought it was amazing when I saw it. Me, me and uh, Dad saw it in the movie theater. Like me and Dad also saw Apocalypto. So yeah. like we like those like those survival get home because in Apocalypto, the main character has to get back home Jaguar to save Paul. his wife and his uh, son and, and unborn. His, and, yeah, yeah, and it's unborn child because his wife's pregnant. Um, but yeah, this is like a coming of age story. He like leaves a boy and comes back a man, and he brings the the dog or the wolf with him, and then it turns out that it's a female wolf. And she gives birth, and at the end, well, I don't really want to spoil it, but I mean, I mean it's a little, it's a little bit older now. I mean, it's 2018. Point. Like I said, it's, it's not the, that older. It's the, it's basically the origin of like originally domesticating, you know, dogs. Yeah, I mean that's not what the story is, but there is nah, that right. happens. That's not the story. The story is this guy gets separate. It's a coming of age story. You wouldn't it's a survival say, story. but you wouldn't say it's also the origin of domesticating dogs. I mean, I would say that's part of the movie. I wouldn't say that was the movie was the domestication of the dog. That wasn't the movie. That wasn't the point of the movie. Uh, let me ask you this: did, did you did you have a uh, did you jump at the part with the the uh, like the, the saber tooth tiger like at yeah. the beginning? No, not no. It's not in the ice cave. No, no. I, well, number one, I knew it was coming, and number two, it was the same thing. Like. At the beginning of the movie, you see the saber tooth, and it's complete foreshadowing that he fucking takes that dude. Yeah, in the and it fucking... takes that dude. Like that sounds like I would shit. say that was way like kind of creepier than the other one. But it's like again, it was kind of like you know being a movie aficionado and if seeing like horror movies, it's like all right, they were all on edge, and then they're just like all right, everyone like they sit back down and they're like all right, everyone keep your gun, and then just steals a dude, and then like you hear him die off screen, and then yeah. the. The dad just looks at his son. He's like, he's gone. There's nothing we can do. <laughs> but we have to continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good movie. All right, Tito. So what do, for, you, got, what do you got next for me? For your movie this week, I'm going to assign you Rear Window. Oh, okay. Okay. That sounds interesting. That's it. Rear Window. Um, And then... So the last uh, part of the uh, podcast or the last segment is the question of the week. And last week's question of the week was what animated or anime character were you attracted to as a kid? And Tito, you had some reservations about people being like that. You didn't think people were going to reach out to me. And immediately after I posted the fucking question, I had somebody reach out and probably about an hour later, I had somebody else reach out about this. So, people ain't scared, bro. Besides, you're the only fucking weird one that put, said Nala. Well, I, I, 
I'm just you asked me. I was I just wanted to be honest with our audience. Okay. I'm just saying. I, <laughs> I just remember how I did it too. I was like, I don't want to say this. I was attracted. No, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I. You, you know, our whole goal is that eventually a bunch of people will reach out and I'm just going to like read one out. But since not a whole bunch of people are reaching out, but I'm super, super appreciative or we're super appreciative we are. to the people that do reach out to us. Um, I just wanted to I just I'm just going to read everybody's. OK, so the first guy that reached out to me was uh, Santi on Instagram, and that's S-A-N-T-I-I. And he said, Faye Valentine. And from Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop, yes. And the second person that reached out to me was Darth Spike. And he is D A R T H underscore S P 1 K E on Instagram. And he also said, Faye Valentine. From Cabo Viva. Then I just thought that was hilarious that two different people said Faye Valentine. But I mean, I totally fucking get it. <laughs> She's hot as hell. Um, and then my own girlfriend, and I'm I'm gonna put her Instagram out there. So it's uh B A B S X O X 14. And she said Danny Phantom from Danny Phantom, the Nickelode- Nickelodeon the, show. The only reason I'm like 100% okay with that is because I was totally like had a crush on Sam in that show too. And I was like, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you guys to uh, everybody that reached out and uh, participated in this. Always um, fun. Yeah, it was always fun. And I, I really, I just thought it was really funny that two people said Faye Valentine. But again, I totally agree with you. Um so this week's question of the week, Tito, are you ready? I'm ready. What okay. is it? Naruto, Ichigo, Luffy, Sasuke, Byakuya, Zoro. Pick two people to protect you. The other four are trying to kill you. And why'd you pick those two? Okay. Uh, uh, first of all. And how long do you think you last? First of all, you got to give me what age are Sasuke and Naruto? Like, are we talking about? Sasuke and Naruto at... Like Sasuke and Naruto at the end of Shippuden. Shippuden. Okay, 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 okay. Um. Uh. I think. I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go Naruto and Luffy. So Naruto and Luffy are your defenders, and I and Ichigo, yeah. Sasuke, Byakuya, and Zoro. Are the four people that are trying to kill you? Yes. Okay. How long do you think you can? How long do you think you're gonna like? So last? Do you think they're gonna protect? Re- they'll be able to protect you forever. Re- realistic. Well, I mean, if if they're if they're like fighting to the death to kind of like yeah, try yeah, and yeah. kill me, so I'm hoping. So realistically, I like I'm feeling like Naruto and Sasuke have to go at it completely, like just off to the side, and it's gonna be Luffy versus Zoro. Ichigo and Byakuya and reason being just for that is because I don't think the other characters have anything to combat uh, Sasuke's Genjutsu and because you know even though they're rivals and you know they go back and forth I still feel like you know Naruto beats Sasuke at he beats him at the end of Shippuden so there's like there's that fight finishing off right there so I'm hoping that that gets you don't think it ends in a draw in Shippuden I it's, well, f- first of all, I'm not gonna ruin what yeah, happens yeah, at yeah. the end of Shippuden necessarily. I'm just kind of saying because like, I didn't fucking know that was yeah, gonna happen. Saying, so like, but it's still kind of known, you know. I've, you know, Boruto kind of started, so it's kind of hard to not say that things didn't progress. Like, I, I'm not gonna say exactly right. how the fight goes and all the other stuff that happens in between. But yeah, no, I'm I'm having them fight off to the side, and then you think Luffy can take those fucking three jag- juggernauts? So the on? only one that I would be and it's 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 hard to say that it would just be a competition like Zoro's the one that poses the biggest threat to Luffy not Ichigo or or Byakuya maybe maybe Ichigo with his Getsuga Tensho and maybe Byakuya with some of his uh can can Luffy cuz I haven't watched I mean I've seen some but not enough can Luffy like not be cut by swords? So I would say edge weapons would be normally Luffy's weakness. However, with his mastery over hockey, which I don't really want to go too far into explanation, like if you haven't gotten that far or that, but it, you know, it, 
if you cannot also use hockey, like Ichigo's blade and Byakuya's blade, even when he turns it into, you know, like he uses his Bankai, like their blades aren't going to penetrate like Luffy's skin. So, and, but Zoro also knows how to use hockey. So that's how I would say like the, like the main competitor against Luffy would be Zoro. However, Luffy is faster than Zoro, especially like with, like second gear or so you think like, those two are going to be able to take on the the other four yes like uh, i think it's crazy that you're like naruto is just gonna fight sasuke by himself and luffy's gonna have to fight these other i got three guys. faith in my favorite mc dog i don't know if you saw everything that i've seen like you would you would you would also see that tito he I, is a beast all right we still have a little bit of time because i we fucking Totally forgot to do something what at the top to of the show. This should have been the hot take. What? We didn't talk about the fucking Snyder Cut. Oh, we didn't. Uh, we just, we stayed okay, up and watched it. We did, but at the same time, like, it's brand new. And again, you and I are pretty good about not immediately talking about something Yes, that yes. Just We're happened. not going to, like, spoil. Well, again, I mean, for though, okay, here's the thing. It's a four-hour movie. But it's it's basically the Justice League extended with some some changed things, but not huge, huge plot points. Like they still revive Superman. They still defeat Steppenwolf at the end. Like th- the main things are still there. So But you got to see so much stuff that you didn't yes, before. But, but a lot of this stuff is in the trailer. So yeah, like, but originally in the flashback you see Steppenwolf attacking everybody and in the movie's flashback, it's Dark Side that Yes, does it. but again, this was in the trailer. You also see Dark Side. You also see Omega Beams, which I think was the only part of the whole fucking day where you're like, oh, damn, that was awesome. Yes, it and was I, awesome. Yeah, I know. It was. <laughs> but I was just like, you were just so fucking quiet during the whole thing. And I was like geeking out so fucking hard. But yeah, that was like the one time we were like, oh, that was awesome. Yeah. Well, like I, I again, I. It, it just the way that DC's been trying and Warner Brothers been trying to do. It's not that any of the DC movies I've hated or or completely just disliked. It's been more of their mad dash to catch up to Marvel. I get and it. And I feel like I feel like they should have been like, look, if we can just do these right, we'll do our own thing, and we'll. People are still gonna go and watch your movies. I didn't feel like they had to, you know, rush it. Yeah, I'm still not the biggest fan of number one Cyborg's look. Or uh, plus, I didn't like him being part of like the new Justice League. Like, I I still view him. That, as a, I still view him as a teen Titan. I don't really he care about that. Titan. I don't really care I about do. that too much. Besides, Zack Snyder said that Cyborg was the heart of the movie. Like, and there was way more, way more Cyborg in this movie than there was in the original Justice League. Well, which that's I also because was really oh, cool. The original Cyborg doesn't just get like it's just like in the Teen Titan. Like when you see Teen Titan Cyborg, like he's not bonded with the the mother box yeah, like yeah. they like they make them in the in the new 52 and like the newer comics like that's why it ended up being like such a pivotal point for that also the the fact that the father box isn't mentioned and they make it seem like the mother box is kind of like evil is something that i have a big issue with too i don't know they haven't mentioned new genesis at all either it was apocalypse. All right. it was i digress fucking fantastic so yeah good movie great just movie. you need to watch it if you haven't seen it but yeah we, we don't want to get into too many spoilers or anything like that. Just watch it. It was awesome. Me and Tio sat through the entire four-hour movie right when it came out. At 2 in the morning. At 2 in the morning for us because it came out at midnight over there. Good job, Zack Snyder. Keep yes. keep doing what you do. You're amazing. And I hope that come this proves. <laughs> yes, come on the show, please. <laughs> I hope that this proves to like all the doubters and the haters because it, 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 scored, it scored in the high eights on IMDb. So like it's doing just as good as some of the fucking MCU movies. So also I, I will add just real quick again, one of my problem with the original ones was I felt like they made Batman too much of a little like punk when it came to fighting the uh, I parademons. Mean, uh, the parademons, and in this one, it seemed like he was a contender, and I was extremely happy about that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm happy about that. I hope that they keep making more movies. I hope they let Zack Snyder do the sequel to this. Because I now that you can't just give me a taste of Dark Side and be like, and that's it. There's not gonna be anything. Else. They they better fucking do a movie where they get to fight Dark Side. I'm gonna be so fucking excited for that. But anyway, uh, 
That's all Where the can they find you, guys. Tito? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> says that uh, if you ever want to reach out to me, talk to me about any of the stuff we talked about on the podcast or even earlier podcasts, uh, you can always uh, reach me on Instagram or Twitter at Bandito Tito 93. Uh, you can just at me or send me a, a message on any of those. I'd love to hear from any of you guys. Uh, hit me up. What about you, Junior? Where can I find you? Uh, you guys can uh, find me at pops.maniac on Instagram as well as nerdy.bros.inc on Instagram. Um, we posted, uh, like I said, we've posted the first video, and this next one is also going to be on uh, Pops Maniac, uh, my YouTube channel. But hopefully soon we're going to put this on our own uh, YouTube channel, Nerdy Bros Inc., um, hopefully sometime soon. But also you can just watch all my uh, – Pops related videos on Pops Maniac. But uh, that's going to be it for this uh, episode, guys. Uh, have a good week. Yeah, guys. Thanks for watching or listening. Bye.